It's great to be here. This, you know, two years since the last show, it's fantastic it's just to be here. I just had a look at the points before and it's, it's looking very tight, sort of right on the line to try and get in. It's really awesome that um, our, like the local committees for all the different shows are still doing it. It gives us a good purpose to want to um, show up and support them. Life on the land. There's something very Kiwi about the great outdoors, the very special bond between people and animals, and how our farmers adapt to the environment and the seasons. And once a year, we can all celebrate the great achievements of our farming community through that iconic family event, the New Zealand Agricultural Show. No mai, haere mai, welcome to the NZ Agricultural Show online. Now this arena would normally be packed with people today, but unfortunately due to COVID, we aren't able to have it that way. But come on, have a look at exactly what's been going on in our online show. There's a packed program of judging ahead at Canterbury's Agricultural Park and even those 60 to 80,000 strong crowds have been replaced with just a few hundred for two years now, there's no less kudos for our farmers than to do well at the show. The show judges' important job is to ensure the New Zealand herd excels in health and quality. So what we're looking for is longevity and high production, the points for that. So we're starting right up with the head, nice big broad muzzle, Good heart girth in there, good spring of ribs, obviously they want to be able to eat, and then strong top line through to the rump for the udder attachment where you want the udder attachment right through. Good width in the rear and good feet. Encouraging the next generation of farmers is an important focus for the New Zealand Agricultural Show and these dedicated youngsters were keen to demonstrate their junior goat handler skills before the critical eyes of the judges. I got first, Josh got second, Neve got third. What do you like about coming to the show? Um, lots of fun. Get to take goats out, get to see what they're like compared to other goats. And did you have a good time today? Are you happy with your placing? Yeah. Backstage in the RDA arena, competitors are looking pretty chilled as the dog trials get underway. There's perhaps no greater understanding between a human and an animal than when the two cooperate. Working dogs like these are quick, agile and loyal, traits that have evolved over centuries of helping humans care for their herds. This year, it's an indoor course, smaller than the usual outdoor trials. But you have to admire the moves as the sheep are coaxed into exactly where the farmer wants them. Dog okay. trials convener Kerry Pauling has been competing for the past 15 years. We have competitors from, you know, from 15 or 16 years of age up to about 90. It's a great sport to, to have a community involvement in. But today this course is mainly about um, controlling sheep, like we, uh, the heading dogs are a gathering sheep, that, uh, a gathering dog that we use for gathering the sheep off the farm and, get, and getting into the yards so that we can do our work. A whopping 870 sheep have been brought in for this shearing competition. Let's go check out some of the action. And inside the Ag Park Shearing Pavilion, the atmosphere is electric. The New Zealand Agricultural Show Canterbury Shears Corridale Shearing and Wool Handling Championships is arguably the biggest event of its kind in the country. It's one of the most action-packed events of the show, where human athletes get to show off the incredible skill required to shear a live animal without damaging the sheep or fleece. Last year, we met Sarah, aiming to qualify for the open plate event. And this year, she's back, with her sights set on qualifying in the open once again. Yeah, I've improved since last year, so um, that's the main thing, yeah. What's changed in the last year? What's been happening with you? Um, so I sold my sharing business, and I've just been back full-time sharing now, and I'm really enjoying it, so I think it's paying off for me now anyway, like, I've improved, so. How are you feeling going into these uh, quarter-finals? Well, um, that's what I wanted to do, was make it through to the next round, and um, I'm probably still a bit of an underdog, so I just want to have fun now and see, just see what I can do. 
One of the cool things about this competition is it's gender neutral. So how do you find that? I love the fact that it's gender neutral. It is great. Um, you know, we're all just humans and we're all just here sharing sheep, so I don't really think it matters too much whether you're male or female. Marlborough shearer Angus Moore has clocked up 18 wins in the 15 seasons since he first won the Golden Shears senior title in 2006. Could this be his 19th? As always, the competition attracts the best from the North and South Islands, so nothing can be taken for granted. There's a lot of talent here today, fantastic shearers here today. Yep. Yep, really good, really good crew of um, up and coming shearers and a really talented bunch of uh, guys who've been around a long time doing the job. So yeah, definitely some of the best in the world here today. Another favourite is Nathan Stratford. Anything can happen, it's a bit like race car driving. Wheels could fall off, you could get a bad sheep, uh, kick a sheep or make too many more mistakes and you're out. Simple. At last year's shearing event, Reuben King, who'd just graduated as a mechanical engineer, won the junior title three points clear of his nearest competition. This year, he's competing in the intermediate event. How are you feeling going into the finals? Yep, uh, nervous, but always need a bit of nerves to make sure that you do a good job. This show is a Corridale show, um, so it's the New Zealand Corridale title. So a Corridale is um, a, a more fine wool sheep than your typical um, crossbreed Romneys and stuff that you'll find in New Zealand. The wool's a bit um, finer in the micron, so it's better for um, different type applications of clothing and stuff. But it also means that the sheep are a little bit trickier, they've got more wool on them. Um, it's harder to make a real good clean job and um, that's what show sharing is all about, is a good clean fast job so um, it makes the quality a little bit harder to get so it makes it more interesting it sort of can go anyone's way. The New Zealand blade sharing titles are also decided at this event and familiar contenders on the stand are international competition teammates Alan Oldfield and Tony Dobbs. Last year Alan took out the title but going into the finals it's Tony who has the edge. We had the heat and Tony top qualified but I'm uh, 0.1 of a point behind him I think, so that's uh, what's that, about two seconds worth of time points. So it's looking like it could be a quite a close final again. Me and Tony have a great rivalry in the competitions but we're good friends as well. Um, yeah I think sharing's great. We take the competitions really seriously but at the same time I don't think there's any enemies on the field like you, you do your best to win but the way the sport is really competing against yourself. How are you finding the conditions in the sheep? Uh, the sheep are a little bit skinnier this year I think um, and the wool's a bit yellow I think because it's been such a wet winter uh, the sheep have suffered a wee bit. Last year they, I, they must have had a really good winter, sheep were big and round and strong, this year a bit skinnier. Tony's not only competing, he's also a judge for some of the shearing events. He explains that in the heat of competition, shearers focused on being fast at their peril. Judges out the back are deducting points for second cuts, any bumps or wool left on the sheep and nicks on the animal's skin. Uh, yeah, there's some really good jobs coming out the back. Um, you can see the guys that were shearing within themselves and confident in backing themselves to do what they were doing and the ones that were probably chasing the moment and they pay for it out the back. Yeah. Working at a pace that's in sync with the shearers, there's a highly skilled team of wool handlers and classes laying out, sorting and bailing the fleeces. Wool handling itself is a major focus of the competition here. I caught up with World Wool Handling team champion Pagan Parodia and asked her about her training. I mean I train for six months and then we compete for six months. Um, so a lot of rest and a lot of nutrition goes in before turning up today. Um, we'll go out and have a little wee run yesterday and just kill a few nerves and, and get everything in the right place and then turn up to compete today. During the competition, Shira shears all the wool off the sheep and then I take all the wool and I place it on the table and in its bins. We remove any short wool, discoloured wool and it all goes into various baskets. So we have cheap wool, it comes off around the sheep's face, it has medulated fibres so that has to be removed and kept on its own, along with socks as well, they're kept on their own. Um, we remove frib off the belly because it can be shorter and discoloured. We also remove uh, second pieces on the board because they're bulkier than the locks and they go through a different processing system. Once we place the fleece onto the table we then remove our first pieces for colour and length and then we remove our necks and the seed for 
Sometimes they can be a bit cotty and then they'll need to go through a different processing system or sometimes they can have a bit of seed build up. That's a huge penalty if it's left in. Um, I'm Emma Martin and I'm competing in the junior wool handling today and the junior shearing tomorrow. I've competed for a couple of years now and it's nice to do your job competitively and it's a, it's a good personal measure and it's a good measure against to see how you rack up against the rest of the field. It's really awesome watching the different grades and how their skill levels um, vary and different um, points that you can take from everyone from throughout the grades to try and hopefully improve your own, own skills. And we'll find out how Emma, Pagan and the Shearers fared in the next episode. But now, a change of pace for the beef judging, which was held virtually this year. I have awarded the cow Java Tonkaniska the Supreme Champion. She is a very good cow with plenty of depth and length right through her body, walks very well and presented well. All the classes of beef cattle were judged from photos and videos, carefully composed according to the judges' strict requirements. For the award the ceremony the audience, it was a very uh, different hold, show hold experience. The smooth bull with length and sire appeal, one to watch grow out, and I uh, do hope we do see them grow out and back here next year. Organisers promise that next year's NZ Agricultural Show will be the best ever. Certainly for the public, nothing beats the experience of seeing our magnificent farm animals in the flesh. But for a first time event, virtual beef was considered a great success. I was very thrilled to see the reception we got for this idea from all the exhibitors around. And I really do feel that what we want to do in future, i.e. take it once we get past COVID and keep this show alive as the New Zealand Virtual Beef Show, I really think that at the end of the season it's going to be the, the New Zealand Beef Show. We will have champions from every show in the country coming forward and I think it's Canterbury's chance to really put its mark on that, that thing. And there's more show action to come, including some very glamorous pigs. So don't miss our next episode. See you again soon.